Hey, good morning. Uh, it's about 8.20 a.m. I just uh, finished running the treadmill. Actually, I was walking. So I've adopted this new thing where uh, I know that sitting is really bad. So I've been listening a lot to Dr. Kelly Starrett, who is the mobility god of the world. He wrote the book, Becoming a Supple Leopard, Ready to Run, and most recently, Desk Bound. So reading that book, I realized that sitting is like cancer. Sitting is like smoking and uh, I tend not to sit from now on. So every morning I go to Equinox, my gym, and I just walk the treadmill very slowly for you know an hour, sometimes two hours, sometimes five hours, whatever I feel like. And uh, I've, been, I've adopted a lot of very small little nuances in my life, little tricks or little changes uh, in my environment, right? Behavioral architecture, choice architecture, to allow for me to actually use parts of my body that are involved in walking, that are involved in running. And one of those is those shoes right there. So if you can see it right there, yeah. So these are Vibrams. These are some amazing quality shoes. Um, and as I walk, I can feel my feet. I can feel my big toes. And yesterday, my trainer, uh, she's fucking amazing. She told me that Arguably, the big toe is the most important part of our body <laughs> because it allows us to essentially walk. And she also told me to have my big toe released, so like pulled and kind of like released uh, because it's kind of tight. And you know, if you're wearing shoes your whole life, shoes aren't very good for allowing your big toe and, and you having the right type of gait. Because a lot of times we walk on our heels instead of our toes our balls of our feet you know Elliot Hulse always taught me there are three types of balls he's probably taught you too um, the you know the the balls of the eyes balls balls like testicles and then the balls of the feet and and you know there's this thing where you breathe in and you breathe into your pelvic floor and it can also go to the balls of your feet and you can feel that that oxygen uh, going all the way down um, so yeah, so I was I was uh, on the treadmill. I was reading, and um, let me let me take you through this. Uh, you know what's, what's going on? It's it's really nice here. It's really really nice. Just had a little bit of coffee from uh, Whole Foods. So I was reading the book Sapiens this morning, and the reason I want to tell you about this book is because this entire concept of risk taking, right? You know, we're, I'm trying to dissect and deconstruct. What is it about me that allows me to take risks, that allows me to uh, sort of be fearless in certain situations? And one thing I realized is my self-education. <laughs> now, most of my self-education I've done in the last four years. So whatever I learned formally, right? So during my undergrad, computer science engineering, my master's degree in neuroscience, PhD in neuroscience, all this formal education didn't really teach me the essentials of life, essentials of practically living and, and, and the reality of, of what we are, right? So it didn't really help me become self-aware. It, it allowed me to get confidence. It allowed me to become intellectual, be, learn anything I need to, kind of manipulate a lot of information in my brain, but it didn't really allow me to get the self-awareness, to allow myself to understand how to make decisions, how to take risk, and one aspect of that is once you have the right type of knowledge here and here, right? Because you also have to feel the emotion of the knowledge, right? You can always intellectualize stuff like, oh, uh, oh yeah, I, 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 I understand your religion or I understand how your parents treated you or I understand uh, uh, how you got bullied. But understanding something, intellectualizing something is not the same thing as feeling something. And feeling something is where the game is at. So when you read certain books and you actually carry out those tasks in everyday life in terms of feeling it, that is when you take those massive risks. Now why? How does information and knowledge give you the power to take risk and make the right decisions? Well, quite simply, it's because 
you understand that there's nothing to lose. You begin to understand that life is a random process. It's a random game and no one really knows what they're doing. Like I have no idea what I'm doing. You have no idea what you're doing. And gaining knowledge about history of the world, history of mankind, history of extinctions, um, history of the finance system, history of religion, uh, biology, right? Specific types of biology like anatomy, neurobiology, physiology, uh, uh, social structures, culture, language. When you get an understanding of various things through self-education, you tend to take more risk because shit just means less to you, right? So yesterday I had an entire, uh, uh, I think it was a couple of hours or hour and a half or something meeting with the whole team, right? So Lala, Manveer, uh, Sunny, uh, and Jev wasn't there, but he'll listen to it later. But one thing uh, that we talked about is this concept of uh, doing high level conversations with people rather than low level conversations, right? This is like a project that, that we all want to work on together uh, and, and, um, and, and something that I want to think about. And, and it's, it's really important because uh, Sunny brought this up and it's, it's really, really cool. It's really interesting, right? So a lot of people, when, when, you, when you go around, they're like, oh, how's the weather? What do you think about the weather? Like they bitch about the winter here in Canada. Uh, uh, people bitch about Donald Trump, right? It, it's all this bitching, right? Um, and then there's this fear of asking questions, right? This is what something Sonny brought up. He's like, uh, what about asking the, the questions that you really want to ask or discussing the things that you really want to discuss with someone? What can you do to overcome the fear of that, to, to like express yourself fully? And then when they ask me what my biggest fear is in life, it's the fear and the anxiety of not being able to express myself fully and that's one reason why I left you know different cities like like Medellin in Colombia when I saw people getting shot and I, I I knew that I wasn't gonna be able to fully express myself there and that's my biggest fear so one thing I want you to comment below is what is your biggest fear like what really fucking scares you all day every day what is the the source of your anxiety what's going on in your life um, that's one and and so so back to sapiens this book i'm reading right so now i'm reading about how um how culture has basically influenced the human mind and and how we do things not biologically right but culturally how we believe certain things so for example uh if you think of hammurabi right 3700 years ago hammurabi's code eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. There's always this con concept of if uh, someone, let's say, let's say I'm an architect and I build your house and you die. Well, I die. <laughs> I build your house and your daughter dies. Well, my daughter dies. But that's only if the two people are equal, right? There's like three levels, the three hierarchies in even Hammurabi's time, 3,700 years ago, and that was the, the superiors, the commoners, and the slaves, right? So the, uh, the book Sapiens talks about that. I'm, I'm almost halfway through now. And then you look at the American system, like the Declaration of Independence states that all men are created equal and, and blah, 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 pursuit of happiness, life, liberty, and whatnot. But there were still slaves, right? So these, these people who wrote the Declaration of Independence and signed it in America just a few hundred years ago, said all men are created equal, but blacks were still slaves. African Americans were still slaves, which is crazy if you think about it, right? Um, and then I was reading about uh, marital rape, right? So how women have always been treated inferior to men, and there's not really any reason for that. There's no real reason for that. Uh, it's, it's really interesting how, how the world is. Um, and, and, and then it was talking about how women can be raped even in marriage, right? It's called marital rape. And even countries like Germany only uh, uh, instituted this law that, that women can take action against their husbands if they get raped 20 years ago, 
right? So even a country like an advanced country like Germany just figured this out recently. And so inequality, um, the fact that we're killing the planet, right? The, the fact that climate is really changing. There's a, there's a speculation that 200 species become extinct every single day on Earth, uh, right? So, so you get, right? And then, you, and, and then you hear about like childhood obesity, you hear about all the wars that are happening in the world. You hear about, uh, you know, the fact that all religion could be a myth. Everything, right? God and, and how God is perceived by different religions and, and prophets. And it's all because we want to create social order. We want to create hierarchies on, on earth. And all that knowledge, all that self-education that you learn, that most things happen because of random events. These are known as black swans. So if you read the book Black Swan, if you read Anti-Fragile by Nassim Taleb, fucking my favorite author of all time by far. I love that guy. It's so hilarious too. You realize that a lot of events are random. They're, they're, they're kind of like... And then we get fooled by this randomness because we try to say, oh yeah, this happened because of this and this and this. And we always try to establish purpose in everything. But evolution doesn't have a purpose. <laughs> we come from evolution. And so why should we have a purpose? So this is very different, very, very subtly different from, from what I've discussed in the past. Because I've always been talking about purpose and, and drive and all that. But it's not really necessary to have a purpose because evolution, which is like the thing that is the reason why we're all here, we all come from evolution, doesn't really have a purpose. It just happens, right? This, this, even this aspect of purpose is something that is in us, in, in the human mind, in, in, in culture. Anyway, uh, I, I wanted to leave you with that this morning. And just the, the main takeaway is the more you self-educate yourself, and feel from here um, and act out and actually s spread that love and energy into other people, right? So when you read something, when you really understand something well, you, you relate it to somebody, you make someone else understand it and you make someone else life better for it and improve their quality of life. That is when uh, you will actually be able to give that gift. Um, and through that feeling, through that emotion is that self-education, that knowledge will make you understand that nothing really matters. So when you think you matter or you, you give yourself importance, your ego importance, that is when you will be afraid to ask questions that you have. That is when you will be uh, afraid to talk high level with someone or, or, or even initiate a project where you need to um, uh, make allow people to understand that listen you know stop being slaves to society stop being a slave to technology stop being a slave to culture stop being a slave to what uh, the authorities have, have sort of instantiated in the world uh, and finally before I go uh, comment below I want to know the most drastic things that that have happened in your life like the things that have really made a big difference for you uh, were they random or do you think they were planned really think about it the things that have made great consequences in your life Was there a chain of events that led to that or it was completely something random that happened that led to this craziness, good or bad, in your life? Think about that. These are known as black swans. I want to know if your life is dominated by black swans or not and then we'll get back to these topics in the future. Alright, I'll see you soon.